Today we're going to demonstrate the Stratasys F370, one of the F123 series of printers, the premier shared office printer for designers and engineers. The F123 series of printers are ultra quiet and have a small footprint, making them ideal for any office setting or environment. To get started, simply plug your printer into a standard wall outlet and you'll be ready to start your first print within 30 minutes. Intuitive, intuitive user interface here. Uh, the four buttons on the left, there's the home where I can view uh, the current print job or load a file from my USB ports. I can manage my queue from here. If I had multiple jobs, I could change the order. I can view my material and manage my print heads as well. Uh, this is also the same menu that you'd use to load material. Uh, notice that it's very intuitive. I have yellow ASA loaded and it shows uh, via the progress bars here that I have yellow ASA loaded. And finally I have my tools menu where I can access printer settings, network settings, uh, as well as do manual, manual calibrations. To open the door, push in, then pull out. Inside the chamber you'll see the tips at the back and there are uh, brushes and flickers for cleaning the tips at the start of every job. They're user replaceable, easy to replace if you need to. And there's a gasket here to seal in the heat. Um, and when the printer is in operation, the door automatically locks so you can't disrupt the print. The new build trays are really quick and easy to remove parts. They're nice and flexible. And they're also easy to install. The parts flex right off. And I can put the tray right back in to reuse it. So I have easy access to the, all of the material bays. This here is a Stratasys F370, so we can see it has four different bays. Two for model on the left here, and two for the QSR support on the right here. If it was an F170, we'd have one model bay and one support bay. The advantage of having two bays is that if I have material loaded into bay one and bay two, if all of the material in bay one is consumed, It'll automatically load the material from bay 2 so I can have longer unattended print time. Of course, bays 3 and 4 are again reserved for our QSR support, which is a soluble support, which enables us to do complex geometries and geometries with through holes and cavities that wouldn't, um, wouldn't allow us to remove support if we weren't using a soluble support. To load material, I just bring my material over to my machine and open the material bay drawer. Now I'm pulling the material out of a foil bag which protects it from moisture contamination. It's the best way to store the material if you have half-used spools. So I'll orient the spool in the correct orientation with the EEPROM on the left. Remove the filament from the retaining clips and load it into the port in the back. I'll get visual notification on the screen that it's ready to load. It's as simple as that. To change the heads, I can access the gantry controls from the gantry and stage menu. And in order to access the gantry area, I first have to open the door before I can access the heads. So we have our standard model head and our standard, standard support head. And to release those, I move the electrical and data connection, and then remove the filament tubes. Release of the lever, releases 
and releases the head. The standard module can be used with three of our materials, including ABS, ASA, and PC ABS. Well, if you want to run PLA, you'll, you'll have to swap the module for one of the included gray PLA-specific extruder heads. So again, releasing the lever allows me to remove the entire extruder head. And for PLA, we're going to be using these PLA-specific extruder heads, which plug in the exact same way. Since PLA uses the model material of PLA uh, to build the support as well, on the support side, we'll be installing a cooler module that just directs air to the bead that's being deposited. Place the filament guide tubes back in place. And I'm ready to load PLA. So I just swapped the heads. And because the machine detected that the heads have been changed from the previous serial number, it will do an automatic tip calibration. I could force it within the tip calibration menu when I go into the tools, but it's really not necessary. One of the great benefits of this is that in a shared office environment, sometimes you might arrive at a printer that looks like it's ready. With the F370, it always is because it'll do that automatic tip calibration. You don't have to guess and see if the person before you actually completed the calibration. It's ready to go.